What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE Dream Matches we all waited for years that bombed miserably. Now, sometimes you have a scenario where an ideal match or a, a dream match occurs and you're like, you know what? This is gonna be great. I've, I've wanted to see these two wrestlers go at it for a very long time. We're about to see something epic and the match doesn't live up to the hype. Uh, the one I can think of off the top of my head is Shinsuke versus AJ Styles, I believe, for the WWE Championship. Uh, I forgot which WrestleMania that was. Uh, I believe they were in New Orleans again. They went back to New Orleans, so I'm not sure. Y'all comment down below. Let me know. I forgot what it was. Um, but um, it didn't live up to the hype. It, it. I think that match was very well anticipated Shinsuke winning the Royal Rumble going against uh the WWE champion at the time AJ Styles like you know we're thinking oh this is going to be uh, uh 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 the match of the night contendent and it wasn't it, it just it wasn't that it was bad but it, it didn't really live up to the hype that uh I think a lot of us expected and the same thing with AJ Styles versus Edge at this past year's WrestleMania a lot of us was thinking Oh, this could literally, you know, this could be a match of the night contender. And not that it was bad, but it didn't live up to the expectation that I think everyone had for it. So we're going to check out uh, some of these moments, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Let's get right into this one, man. When a dream match takes place in WWE, there's a ton of pressure on the talent involved. This is usually a match that fans have been waiting years to see and expectations are on an all-time high. In the past, there's been some dream matches that have reached and even exceeded these expectations. Matches such as The Rock vs. Mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels vs. Kurt Angle, mm -hmm. and even Edge vs. Seth Rollins all delivered and will no doubt stand the test of time. That was a great, great However, match. there are also those dream matches that fell completely Ooh. flat and the talents Ooh. can't reach the high standard that fans oh anticipated. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE dream matches that miserably bombed. Woo. That uh, DX for the Brothers Brothers of Destruction. Glad I never watched that live. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for no, daily no, no, wrestling no. videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also, check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our own wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, AJ Styles vs. Edge. Just said it. When Styles vs. Edge was announced for WrestleMania 38, fans were buzzing. This was a certified dream match that fans never thought was ever going to be possible. Fact. As following Edge's triumphant return to WWE in 2020, one of the names that fans wanted to see him go up against was the phenomenal one. And this was finally going to become a reality. Many fans expected the match to steal the show and potentially mm -hmm. be match of the year contender, but sadly the match was underdelivered. AJ and Edge just never seemed to get out of second gear, and the finish of the match was rather abrupt. The finish saw Damian Priest distract AJ in order for Edge to secure the win. The two would then have a rematch at WrestleMania Backlash, but similarly, this match also didn't hit the mark. Mm -hmm. Number 9, Kurt Angle vs. Chad Gable. And here's the thing, that match wasn't bad. Like, the thing is, the match wasn't bad, but I think maybe because our expectations were so high, a lot of people expected it to literally be match of the year contender. And I think possibly that could have hindered it, you know, but it's not, I don't know. I, I think the match was solid on its own. If it wasn't a WrestleMania match, if it was like on another pay-per-view, I think that match would probably be rated a little bit higher from a lot of people. But it's on WrestleMania. People are expecting a five-star classic. And it was just kind of middle of the road. So. Up to Kurt Angle's retirement match at WrestleMania 35, he would compete in a number of dream matches. Mm -hmm. They included matches against Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, and Chad Gable. In relation to Gable, this was a match that had never taken place before, and naturally there were extremely high expectations heading into the match. Unfortunately, this was an angle in his prime, and Gable had to work rather hard to try and yeah. get a decent match out of the former WWE Champion. The match, whilst not completely terrible, was rather boring and it wasn't what fans were hoping for. Mm -hmm. This would be a reoccurring theme during Angle's last WWE run as it was clear that his days of five-star classics were firmly behind him. Number eight. And it's just one of those things. His, his body has been battered and, and beat up from just all the years of, uh, of just constantly giving it his all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know how many uh, neck surgeries he had. I think it's like three or four or something like that. It's a ridiculous amount of number 
uh, or or well, not surgeries. Well, I think he's had a few neck surgeries, but I think he's broken his neck more than twice or something like that. It's just ridiculous how much punishment he's put his body through to entertain us. So he really couldn't move and and do the same things he was able to do, you know, back when he was younger. So Bret Hart versus Vince McMahon. Following the Montreal screw job yeah. in 1987, Bret Hart squaring off against Vince McMahon had to become one of the biggest potential box office matches in pro wrestling. And in 2010, it finally happened. Hart had returned to WWE and he was going to face McMahon at WrestleMania 26. The early plans were to see Hart team with John Cena to take on McMahon and Batista, however these plans changed to two respective singles matches. Mm. After the match had taken place, it was clear why WWE wanted to initially book the tag match as Hart vs McMahon ended up being one of the worst matches in WrestleMania history. Yeah. The no holds barred match had bizarre plot turns that didn't make a ton of sense and the in-ring action was below par. Yeah. Dave Meltzer, the wrestling observer, wouldn't even rate the match which speaks volumes on how poorly it was received number seven dina and here's the thing about uh the dave Meltzer rating system i don't really go by it i know a lot of wrestling peers do but honestly at the end of the day go by your own rating system it's it's all about you know how you feel about the match as well you know what do you rate it you know i'm, I'm i don't put too much credence into i guess and you know a wrestling purist or someone that's been in the industry for so long and like, oh, this is what I rate this match and this is what it should be. You know, I know a lot of people be like, oh, this person got five stars, that person got five stars, this person has no five star matches. So what does it really say? At the end of the day, it's all personal uh, opinion, really, honestly. So, you, you know, there's no right or wrong answer here. But that match was not, it, it, it wasn't that good. <laughs> it uh bread man uh um bread heart and um vince that just it just i think it was just past its prime people would were, were intrigued but not so much because i mean the montreal screws job was so long ago ambrose versus seth rollins versus roman reigns the Shield are well established for being one of the greatest stables in WWE history. Mm -hmm. They launched the careers of three future WWE champions in Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. As their popularity grew, so did the demand to see a triple threat match between all three men. Fans expected this to eventually happen at a WrestleMania event. Yeah. However, they decided to randomly book the Shield triple threat at a B-level pay-per-view known as Battleground. Stupid. This would take place just before WWE were officially splitting the brands in 2016, and the bill seemed to promote the brand split more than the actual dream match. The match itself was by no means bad, but by the yeah. time it had culminated, fans had already forgotten about it. The match without a doubt should have headlined a WrestleMania, and WWE may never get the opportunity to amend this huge mistake. They dropped the ball. They dropped the ball. That is a main event WrestleMania match. You can't tell me. That's a main event WrestleMania match, a triple threat to see who really is the best out of the shield. People take my money, but once again, eh, we, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> like Number six, it. Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. This should have been much career, better than Bobby Bobby what it was. Lashley would repeatedly state that going one on one with Brock Lesnar was his own personal dream match. This was also a dream match for fans, and at the start of 2022, WWE decided to finally book the yeah. epic showdown. The two would collide at the Royal Rumble event for the WWE title, and fans expected an absolute war between the two. The match didn't have much substance, and the story of the dream match was overshadowed by a Paul Heyman yeah. heel turn and interference by Roman Reigns. Fans were left disappointed, and so was Lashley, as he stated in several interviews since the infamous match that he hopes WWE books a rematch between himself and the Beast Incarnate, that crown jewel. Number five, Goldberg versus the Undertaker. And they did, and I, I feel like their second match was better. I don't know if they're gonna have a a, a one more match to see, you know, his best. Two, uh, uh, two out of three, you know, because they both have one win over each other. But their first match should have been much better than what it was. I don't have a problem with Roman interfering. I just didn't like the fact that Bobby barely got any offense, and then after that, he started getting he started getting waxed. Like he started, it was like he had a little bit of offense, and then it was like, oh, Brock turned in, <laughs> turned up, and then. Bobby Lashley could never really gain that momentum. I'm like, bro, he shouldn't. It felt like he was starting to get squashed certain points, like toward like the majority of that match, which I felt like is a disservice to him. And the simple fact that pretty much Brock was no selling him in the buildup. Like he was 
treating him like he was a joke. And I didn't really like that as well, so. Take her. But during the Attitude Era, one of the dream matches fans wanted to see take place was WCW's Goldberg and WWE's uh -huh. Undertaker going one on one. Whilst both were present in the WWE during the Ruthless Aggression Era, they avoided the match mainly because both were top babyfaces and there was no logical reason to book the match. The two would finally collide in 2019 mm. and whilst both men were past their prime, there was actually still a strong amount of buzz of heading into the match. Of course. The match from the very beginning was a total disaster and it was a miracle that neither man was seriously hurt. Goldberg reportedly suffered a concussion whilst headbutting the locker room door and this was aggravated when he went headfirst into the ring post. One of the worst spots of the match saw Goldberg proceed to drop The Undertaker mm. right on his head following a jackhammer attempt oh in a move that God. could have seriously injured the wrestling legend. Oh the dead man God, then proceeded man. to hit Goldberg with a tombstone which legitimately spiked Goldberg on his oh head. My God. Goldberg then attempted his own tombstone, however he couldn't get Taker into position and they both fell over. This... The Undertaker then simply had oh. enough and called an audible. The dead man performed a chokeslam and the match was over. Taker and Goldberg would later reveal that they were utterly ashamed of the performance and following the match, there were calls from fans to see both men hang up their boots with immediate effect. Yeah, Number four, eight never saw this match. Always, you know, we've seen videos about this whole debacle. Uh, it's just a match that it just, it, it, it reminds you how time waits for nobody. And some people, they, they can't physically do what they used to when we were growing up, you know. So, yeah, that was a that's the AJ tough Styles one. versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Talked about this the as Styles well. Styles versus Nakamura from Wrestling Kingdom 10 is widely regarded as one of the best pure wrestling matches of all time. Therefore, when it was announced that WWE were planning on to do AJ versus Nakamura at WrestleMania 34, fans were elated. Fans expected an all-time classic, but mm -hmm. instead they got a match that wasn't even the best match on the show. Nope. The match was seriously uninspired, and it was as if AJ and Nakamura had no intention of matching their New Japan Pro Wrestling Classic. The reason the match was so poorly received was because fans' expectations were far too high. Yeah, Speaking I on After that. the Bell, AJ revealed, Expectations were way too high. I know Nakamura thought so too, because no matter what we would have done in that match, the expectations were too high. Here's what a lot of people don't understand. Crowd, fans, the WWE Universe, New Japan and all that stuff, their fans are everything. They're everything. They set the tone on what is a great match. It's how they respond to it, and in Japan they're so respectful. When they do respond, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is such an amazing match. But had that same match been done in a WWE ring without the same response, it's not going to be declared as that great of a match. Mm -hmm. Fans are everything. They dictate a great match. It's just the reality and the truth of the whole thing and that a lot of people don't understand. The expectations were so high because of what we did at Wrestle Kingdom. I was like, oh man, I still think it was a great match. Number three, and that's the thing that, I, like I've said at the beginning, that match wasn't bad. That it actually wasn't a bad match by any means. Honestly, it's one of those scenes where I think it's a combination of one. That's when they were doing the super long WrestleMania, so people knowing that they gotta sit there for a few other matches. That's one that can be wrestling fatigue involved on the placement of the match. And two, at the end of the day, you know fan expectations they're expecting one thing and they get another and it's not even a bad match it's just a lot of times the fans expect to expect something to be just out of this world crazy and it, it can may it may not even just get close to someone or uh, what they expected in the gym from the jump so but not nah, that match wasn't bad by any means but it just Fans just didn't really receive to it as well as uh, they were hoping to. John Cena versus The Undertaker. This one definitely When John didn't Cena deliver. became the face of this WWE in match. 2005, it only seemed logical for WWE to eventually book a feud between Cena and Taker. This was a surefire WrestleMania main event that would have a huge box office potential. WWE eventually booked the match in 2018, but at this stage, both men were virtually semi retired. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding both men no longer being full time WWE talents, anticipation to finally see them collide again again was incredibly high. What fans would ultimately get was a three minute match which saw the dead man squash Cena. Yeah, he squashed the match him. would act as a showcase of The Undertaker's moveset and fans were insanely annoyed that this is what they delivered. Yeah. It was almost as if WWE were scared that Taker and Cena couldn't put on a great match and they consequently decided to book a short squash match. Mm -hmm. Taker would express disappointment in the match in a number of public interviews and he was completely justified in his emotions. It was an utter letdown and WWE without a doubt missed the mark. Yeah. Number two, Goldberg versus Brock. They definitely should have let them like really go at it because it 
I've they faced each other before, but it's very it's early in John's career, like very early in his career. Um, when he was doing the Doctor Thug and Nomers, like they barely it's it's not too many times they actually faced each other, and especially at a WrestleMania like that. That you know, so that's something that I they really maybe they could have let them have like maybe ten to fifteen minutes, give the fans something special to remember. Lesnar. Well, the build to Goldberg versus Lesnar at WrestleMania 20 was superb. It was intense, compelling, and even mm -hmm. featured Stone Cold Steve Austin. This was going to be a dream match, and there were we even rumors that WWE were considering making it the main event of the pay-per-view. Unfortunately, just before the match was set to take place, it leaked online that both men were planning to leave WWE as soon as the match was over. Mm -hmm. The MSG crowd therefore wanted no part of the match, and they yep. heckled and booed both men. Goldberg and Lesnar were stunned by this reaction and clearly had no idea how to combat it. Most of the match was stalling and when a move was hit, the wrestler who performed the move would get distracted by negative crowd response. The match fell flat, but thankfully both men managed to redeem themselves when they would revisit the feud 12 years later. It's and crazy. It's, it's so crazy that when it originally happened, uh, fans, they didn't care. They was like, screw both of you guys. The only person they cared about in that ring at that point was Stone Cold. The fans literally like, oh, y'all both leaving. Well, none fucking don't matter. Screw both of you guys. Number one, Team WWE versus The Alliance. Yeah. And it's well documented that the Invasion storyline was a total bust. Mm -hmm. The idea of WWE versus WCW was unfathomable at one stage, but after Vince McMahon acquired his own competition in 2001, it could finally be a reality. The issue with WWE had was that a lot of the major WCW stars were under set contracts, meaning they could be paid to sit at home and basically do nothing. Mm. This meant that if WWE were going to deliver a WWE versus WCW dream match, they would have a limited selection to do so. Yeah. Their idea was to introduce the alliance, a partnership between WCW and ECW whose aims were to take over the WWE. This would come to a head at the Invasion pay-per-view, which is actually one of the most successful pay-per-views in WWE history. The main event featured Team Alliance versus is Team WWE. The Alliance team featured Booker T, Bubba Ray Dudley, mm -hmm. Diamond Dallas Page, Devon Dudley, and Rhino. The issue here was that outside of Booker and DDP, all of these talents had been present on television before the invasion, so this really wasn't WWE delivering a dream match of any sort. It would be revisited once again at Survivor Series, and this time the Alliance featured Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, Rob mm -hmm. Van Dam, Booker T, and Shane McMahon. Three of these talents were WWE staples, so it made no sense, and it just showed how the WWE completely botched the dream rivalry. Yeah, you the worst think thing about was that it. if the WWE had just waited a year to do the feud, they could have had Team WWF versus Team WCW that featured The Rock, Undertaker, Triple H, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Kurt Angle versus Hulk Hogan, oh Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Ric Flair, and Booker T. Oh. It was one of the biggest missed opportunities that would in have the been history insane. of the entire company. Well, that would have been insane if they just would have waited out and didn't pull the trigger as soon as they did. Imagine that's a five. Oh my God, that would have been insane. Woo! That would have been crazy. That would have been crazy. But yeah, this was a good list. Comment down below. Let me know what are some matches that, uh, you know, a lot of people were hyped to see. And then when it actually happened, it didn't live up to a lot of people's expectations. If you've seen it on this list, that's cool. Or if, if there are some other matches you can think of or wrestlers where, you know, they were about to go at it or they did have a match and it just didn't live up to the lot the hype let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel and of course i am still you're in the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one